right, so you were just listening to uh, the live announcement of the four U.S. astronauts that will be a part of that NASA uh, Artemis II moon crew, the mission that will uh, orbit the moon before eventually getting us back to having boots on the moon. So joining us with more insight into what the Artemis II mission means to the future of space exploration is former astronaut and International Space Station Commander Leroy Chow. Leroy, as always, thank you so much for joining us here today. Really appreciate your time. We just watched that. Um, the music was pretty inspiring, I would say. NASA announcing the four astronauts will be a part of Artemis II. What was your reaction to the news? Uh, we saw that was uh, one of them was a woman. Uh, of course, a woman has never been to the moon. This is a very diverse group, uh, very different than the first crew to land on the moon. Tell us uh, about your thoughts. Uh, some of these names have been rumored for a while, so uh, nothing was really a complete surprise, but uh, but very excited, very happy for the individuals that were selected. Uh, this will be a historic mission, as you point out, and uh, I'm sure they're uh, on top of the on top of the world today with this announcement. And how do you qualify for uh, a mission like this? What uh, you're saying that you these were people that perhaps you expected. What is it that took them to this point? Well, of course, every one of these individuals is highly qualified, and there are, uh, you know, of course, they were chosen from a pool of, of, of very qualified people. So it would be difficult to say uh, they were chosen because of one particular area in which they excelled. Of course, you brought up the diversity piece, and that's been a, a big point uh, in everything in this, especially in this administration. So again, the the crew composition uh, is not a surprise, and uh, again, I'm very very happy for them all. And can you tell us a little bit more about the goal of the Artemis II mission, um, what the plan will be, and how it will prepare NASA for the ultimate Artemis III mission? Sure. Artemis II is in a way like Apollo 8 was to the Apollo program. That is for the, you know, Apollo 8, of course, carried for the first time uh, humans around the moon. They didn't actually land. So that's basically what Artemis II will do. The landing system has not been built yet. It's not yet ready. And so um, in a demonstration of the, uh, the, the rocket, the Orion spacecraft and the SLS, they are now going, NASA is now going to send these four astronauts on a mission around the moon, but they won't simply be going around the moon. It'll be a little more of a different mission than Apollo 8 and that they will be going farther into space than the Apollo 8 astronauts did. And uh, so they'll be doing more checkouts at the upper stage of the, the spacecraft system. So it'll be a little bit different on broad strokes. Yes, it's very similar to Apollo 8, but in the details of the test objectives, it's going to be a little different. And I think a question a lot of people have, especially those of us like me who were not alive for the last time astronauts went to the moon, why has it taken 50 years, more than 50 years, to get us back up there? That's an excellent question, and the simple answer is uh, mostly that there's no, been no political reason to go. We had the Apollo program. We were in, a, in what was perceived back then as a life-or-death competition with the Soviet Union on who could get to the moon first. And, of course, after we won that race and flew a few more missions to the moon, there was no more political need for the program. So the program was actually canceled with three more flights on the manifest that were ready to go. And so that's why, since that time, we really haven't had a political reason to do this. Now, uh, the, the next big objective is to send humans to Mars. Of course, that's been the goal for a number of decades, but it seems like we're finally starting to get a little bit closer uh, to reality on that. And so this is the first step NASA's taking is to you know, put astronauts around the moon or in what we call cislunar space, you know, the space between the Earth and the moon uh, before going on to Mars. So a big milestone for sure coming up with this next Artemis flight with the Artemis II crew. And hopefully that will lead to more successes landing again on the moon in the future and then uh, one day going on to Mars. And real quick before we go, you think we'll see Mars in, in our lifetimes? I am hopeful, and uh, actually, I have to say, uh, I'm a big, uh, I've been very impressed with uh, commercial space, with SpaceX. I believe they're getting ready to launch uh, their first orbital flight test of their Starship and Falcon wow. Super Heavy rocket. Um, and I frankly think that it's going to be a partnership between NASA and SpaceX, or perhaps SpaceX alone that gets to Mars first. So we'll just have <laughs> to wait and see. But yes, because of that, I am confident that we will see humans on Mars uh, in my lifetime. Very exciting stuff. All right, former NASA astronaut Leroy Child, thank you so much as always for joining us. Really appreciate it. We'll be right back. My pleasure. Thank you.